This is Harvest Tower. This is Harvest Water, and this, this was a mistake. But let's go back to the very beginning. This is Harvest, Team Fortress 2's most iconic King of the Hill map added to the game back in 2009. It's so chaotic and wild, everybody loves Harvest. But fast forward to 2022, and I got greedy. I wanted more, more thrill, more chaos, more bloodshed, but I don't know how to make maps. I needed to find a professional who could indulge my sick fantasies. Enter Urk. Now you may already know this gentleman from his work on Rumford, Soul Mill, Corruption, Carousel, or even that one time he added working fire extinguishers to Turbine. Suffice to say, he was the perfect man for the job, so I gave him three different prompts for small tweaks I wanted made to the beloved map Harvest. One, replace the point with the tower from Hightower. Two, flood the whole map up to the ceilings, and three, make the center building spin. I'm happy with the direction I gave on the first two, but I made a huge mistake with that third request. But we'll get to that later. Once he sent me all the finished maps, I set them up on my TF2 server Grouchland, invited you guys to come join me, and on that day, Harvest Havoc officially began. I just gotta be honest with you guys, this one is my favorite. First off, it's asymmetrical, which means red team probably has an advantage since they can more easily access the point from their roof, but look at me, look in my eyes. Do I look like the kind of guy who cares? Secondly, it's the only map I've ever played which has health packs on the capture point itself, and it's quite a lot of health up there. There's also only one land route leading to the point, creating the super choky hallway of doom. The high ground, the choke, the health packs, it all makes the point very defendable from the ground, but in the air, it's less defendable than Scout's old Twitter account. Soldiers, demo men, and crafty scouts can kind of just pop on and off whenever they please. It's over, soldier! I have to hang on! You underestimate my power. Don't try it! A single air blast from a pyro can also knock off several enemies at a time, making the whole capture area feel like a pugil joust. It's way more chaotic than normal high tower because now everybody is actually incentivized to fight over the tower itself. Urk also did an amazing job with the aesthetic for Harvest Tower, making it look like a bunch of other maps crash down into it with wreckage everywhere. I give Harvest Tower an A, which stands for <coughs> because that's what you're going to be hearing every 5 seconds on this map. 15 seconds. That's how long it takes for every class in the game to begin drowning in water. After that, you take 5 damage per second until you either go up for air or drown completely. But I've watched anime, I know how the world works. If you give something up, then something of equal value must be gained. So what's worth trading away your health? Well, the ability to completely delete gravity from your character. That's right, in water you can reposition yourself anywhere, so aside from that whole drowning to death thing, you're basically just flying, meaning that enemies can come at you from any direction so you have to constantly be on guard, but you can approach them in crazy new ways too, and soldier mains can no longer just mindlessly shoot at people's feet to kill them. What? It's just not worth it anymore. Demoman's pills also don't work underwater either, but Scout's speed increase helps him swim faster which makes the babyface blaster absolutely ridiculous. Oh, and apparently Engineer's buildings are made with flex seal because they're completely waterproof. And Pyro? Don't even get me started on the Pyro. People don't catch on fire underwater, which you would think makes Pyro completely useless on this kind of map, except for this one weapon called the Neon Annihilator, which does triple damage critical hits to wet enemies. Check out this clip. A rogue engineer risks his life to set up this cheeky teleporter on the point and blue team just doesn't notice, and after that, all it took was one brave pyro shark to get the jump on them and boom, carnage ensues. But let's talk about the map itself. Due to how water works in Team Fortress 2, there's no way to have different water levels at different parts of the map, it's just one big water block. What does this mean for harvest water? Well, it means that the spawns are completely flooded. So if you're AFK, you won't be AFK for long because you'll be dead. Urk also decided to have those harvest hay bales float, creating these small islands players can flock to and shoot down into the water. A worse mapper would have left them on the ground, but a better mapper would have turned them soggy, somehow. Despite this massive oversight, I will still give harvest water an A for because hubba hubba have you seen heavy swim animation. 
Okay, you guys saw this one in the intro. I mean, what do I have to say for myself? This is just a monstrosity. Here's one little factoid I did not know before playing this map. Apparently, quickly moving objects in TF2 damage players. Quite a lot, actually. And that brings me to the biggest mistake I made during this whole project. I never actually told Urk how fast the building should spin. What I wanted was about 20% of the speed that I got. I mean, look at this thing. It looks like it's about to take off. In my head, this was going to be the more normal map of the bunch, like a palette cleanser between the other two crazy maps, but it ended up blowing those two out of the water with its insanity. This was supposed to be a fun house, but instead it's a death trap. Half the kill feed is from the environment. I mean, just look at this poor huntsman sniper trying to land shots on the point. I mean, come on. He's just praying arrows will make it through somehow, but they just never do. But it gets worse. The giant rotating barn doesn't destroy engineer buildings, meaning that sentry guns built in this sweet spot basically have flashing armor, making them very difficult to kill, but also giving them sight lines to both the point and the house area at regular intervals. This was the last map Urk built, and I think by this time his bloodlust had been properly activated, because without being instructed to, he decided to make these health pack buildings spin as well. Players would run in to grab a health pack, but get smacked around by the building so much that it would deal more damage than it heals off. And speaking of running in, getting to the point in the first place is a timing disaster. If you jump in just a little early or a little too late, you'll miss the entrance entirely and get smacked by the barn itself, dealing like 30 plus damage. It's especially difficult for heavies to get in, but once they do, it is a problem for the enemy team because your aim rotates with the building. So while everyone else is doing intense calculations to try and land a single shot on the point, whoever is on the point can just set their crosshair right on the exit and lay down the law across the entire radius of the map. Oh, but the roof, you might say. The roof has a symmetrical hole right in the middle, meaning it would be very easy to just shoot from the high ground down onto the point since it will hardly move. You fool! The roof is slanted, so you'll be constantly getting hit horizontally by a moving object dealing immense amounts of damage. And just to top it all off, the barn explodes at the end of the round, revealing the burial site of your friends and foes, reminding you that in the end, it doesn't even matter because we're all going to the same place anyways and that place is called HELL. I give Harvest with a Twist an A++ because everybody loved it. It was by far the most popular of the three maps, proving once again that TF2 players have no soul. If you want to join me in on the chaos and play these maps for yourself, go to grouchland.net and hit connect. You'll be taken right there.